Hello, everybody. Welcome to our program, Stronger Together. I'm Pastor Mike, and uh, we're, we are so happy to have you with us and to share the Word of God with you. And uh, just to just let the Holy Spirit minister to your spirit, man, minister to you in the depths of your hearts. I know uh, that it will change your life. It'll change. It, sure, it certainly changed my life. I know it's going to change your life. So. Uh, let's just get right into this. Uh, we're going to talk about the, uh, the fire of Pentecost. Uh, where is it? Where is the fire? Uh, I know that in some places the Spirit of God is being quenched, but I'm praying that in Pakistan the Spirit of God is a fire in your nation lighting things up, lighting you up, uh, and causing you to move in, in, in the, the experience of God, move in what He is doing, uh, and when you've got the fire on the inside of you, man, it changes everything. It, ch it completely turns everything upside down in your life. So where is the fire? Uh, you know, some people uh, are wondering where the fire is at. Uh, you know, where is, where is the, uh, the Holy Spirit? We talk about the Holy Spirit, but we're not seeing anything happening. We don't see anything happening in our churches. We don't think, see anything happening anywhere else. And, uh, you know, some people think it's just a myth. You know, it's just something that religious people talked about, uh, or or it's something that uh, that happened uh, when Jesus and the and for Jesus the, and the apostles, the original apostles and disciples of the Lord, but that it passed away. No, I guarantee you, the Holy Spirit did not uh, just go away. He didn't just. Uh, it wasn't just for a, a, a period of time or a moment uh, in history uh, when the church was first. Uh, rising up and beginning to, to move forward. No, the Holy Spirit is uh, still here. He is still active, and uh, he is ready to manifest. He's ready to pour out uh, and to fill your life. Even as we are talking and sharing right now, he's ready to move powerfully. So uh, where is the Holy Spirit? You, you, some people think that it's some kind of a random event that takes place <clears throat> and many are waiting for a, a random event to happen they're just they're they're looking here they're looking over there they're just kind of waiting to see what's going to happen and they hear a little bit of you know they heard something oh maybe somebody had a meeting over there or something happened uh it's, it's they just treat it like some kind of a a random event to take place but a a or waiting for a random uh, move of God to just kind of break out someplace uh, in a revival meeting somewhere. Uh, we hear about a revival meeting. We, we run over here or we run over there or a mass gathering of people uh, together and, and uh, you know, they have a random move of the Holy Spirit or, or you know, sometimes people are simply waiting for a special preacher, speaker to come, somebody that's anointed uh, to, to help them receive the Holy Spirit. No, it doesn't have to be like, like that. Ran, a random events are very passive, and uh, just, it's just us waiting for something to happen, and uh, you don't have to do it that way. You don't have to uh, receive the Holy Spirit as some kind of a random act or a random event that just kind of, well, it just happened to show up in our area. It's, it's, there is a better way than just waiting for a random event or a revival event or a special speaker to come into your area. And those are all good and fine. Don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying to you. Those are all good. They're all fine. They, and it works. Uh, but there is a better way. That's what I'm trying to express to you. There is a better way to receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 and 8, seek and you will find. And that's the better way. Instead of just uh, waiting for something random to happen, something uh, just out of the blue, just out of nowhere to, to take place, the Bible says seek. Jesus said seek and you will find. And, and seeking is much more aggressive. You know, I said random is passive. You're just sitting there waiting for something to happen. But seeking is much more aggressive. You are going out there 
looking for something to happen. Wait, you're, you're, you're not waiting for it to happen. You're, you're looking for it to be fulfilled. You're looking for it to happen. You're, you're looking for what it's going to take to jump in and be a part of it. Seeking is always a better way. And seeking is intentional. It's not random. When, when you start seeking, you're, you're doing so on purpose. You're, you're starting to search. You're starting to, to reach out. You're starting to look. Uh, you're, you're, and specifically, you're looking to God. You're, you're seeking Him uh, about the Holy Spirit. And so it's not a random event. Now, in my life, it wasn't a, a random event. When I started seeking, I found uh, until I started seeking, though, you know, I heard about miracles happening over here. I heard about things happening, but, you know, I was a little bit skeptical, uh, worried about going to, you know, th th that church or those people or that group. And, uh, and, and it was just some kind of a random event. It's nice, but, you know, uh, maybe that's just for them. It's not for me. But I'm, I'm telling you that it is for you, that it's not just something that happens to somebody else. It's not just something nice that happens or some nice miracle that's happened or the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It's not just something that's for a, a, a group of people over here, but it's not for you. No, it's for you. And uh, in, instead of waiting for that random event to come to us, then we can, in fact, begin to seek it. That's what Jesus commanded us to do. That's what he said to do. And seeking is being focused. Pentecost is, has not gone away. Pentecost isn't something that came and then went away again. Pentecost is not something where it just came to a, a, the disciples or the apostles or it came to a group of people that you heard about. It's not something that just comes and then goes away. It is not a random event. The Holy Spirit isn't random. And uh, it, it is the fire of Pentecost. It's for, and the Bible says, in the book of Acts, it says that it's for as many as the Lord our God shall call to himself. Well, if God is calling you to himself, then he's also prepared the Holy Spirit for you. And if you seek him, he will give it to you. He will provide it for you. He will pour it out on you. Revivals and meetings and preachers are all good. And I, and I bless, bless them, you know, in, in, and they should be out there. And, and it is our job as preachers to go and to preach the gospel and to, uh, to baptize people in the Holy Spirit. We, we need to do all those things. But what I am saying to you that the better way is instead of waiting for a preacher or a meeting or some random event to come into your sphere of influence, to come into your life or into your town or your home is if you will begin seeking him yourself right now. And you can, you can receive the Holy Spirit. You can receive the fire into your life right now <clears throat> when you seek him. Uh, for, for example, just give you a, a simple example here. Uh, when, when I get hungry, I don't sit around waiting for my wife uh, to bring me food. Uh, when I get hungry, if I get hungry enough and motivated enough, I get up and I start looking. I go to the refrigerator. I go to the cupboard. I go to wherever we might have uh, food stored. Uh, looking for something that is going to satisfy my hunger, and uh, and if I'm if I'm really hungry enough, I won't stop until I find something, and uh, you know, until I've found something that's going to. I'm going to put it in my mouth. I'm going to eat it, and, and I'm I'm going to satisfy the desire of my my stomach. And so, when you when you begin to seek, you become more aggressive. When you begin to seek, it means you've become hungry means you're you're ready to do something it's ready you're ready to make a change you're ready to to take action and that's what seeking is if you're just sitting back uh relaxed and and you're not, you know just waiting for some random event and you know if if god comes my way and if the meeting comes my way well bless god uh, maybe i'll be a part of that but uh, and and okay that's fine but 
if you get hungry enough in your, in your spirit, in your heart, if, you're, if you start getting hungry enough and you say, I'm not going to just sit around and wait for something to happen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and go find it where it's at. I'm going to go wherever I have to go. I'm going to go seek it. I'm going to go search for it until I can satisfy this hunger that's raging on the inside of me. Well, that's how you receive the Holy Spirit. Are you hungry? Are you hungry for the Holy Spirit? Are you, do you have a deep desire on the inside of you that says, I need more. I need more of God. I need to be Filled. I need to be overflowing. I need that river of life moving and uh, moving through me. And uh, if, you, if you start getting hungry enough, you'll become more aggressive and you'll start seeking where to find. And, I, and, and what I want to share with you today is you don't have to seek very far while you're listening right here to me right now. You can just start seeking the Lord and say, I'm, I'm ready for it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared, Lord. I'm crying out to you to give me what Pastor Mike is talking about right now. Seeking means you're hungry. How hungry are you for the Holy Spirit, for the power of God, for the fire of God to reside and live and abide on the inside of you? If you're hungry, I guarantee you that the fire of Pentecost is ready to fill you. Cry out to God. Uh, the fire will fall. The fire will fill. The fire will fuse. It'll fuse with you. And the fire will flow through your life. When you flow in the Spirit, you are flowing with the very heartbeat of God uh, to do what He wants to go where he wants, to accomplish what he wants by his spirit inside of you. There is nothing better than being led by the spirit of God. When you, uh, when you let the Holy Spirit come and live on the inside of you, and you come into that divine Holy Spirit communion, and, uh, and, and you begin having the thoughts of God uh, come into your heart and into your mind where you come into that communion that uh, that relationship with him where you can talk to him and he's talking to you and you're receiving it you're understanding it and he can direct your life and your purpose he can direct you where to release his power and his ability at any moment and uh, we're not even talking about the gifts that come with the Holy Spirit. When you receive the, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, He comes with gifts. He comes to, to endow you. He comes to, to not just uh, make you feel good. It's not, it's, not, it's not like that. But He comes to empower you, and He empowers you with His gifts. He comes to bring His fire upon your life. And seek, seek, seek and you will find. You don't have to beg God. I, I want you to understand very clearly. You do not have to beg God. And I say that from personal experience. You don't have to get down on your, on your face and grovel in the sand. You don't have to beg God, oh, please, please, please give me the, give me the Holy Spirit. It's not like that. Uh, God is more eager to fill you than you are to be filled by God. The Holy Spirit was poured out. And I want you to know that he is here. He is here right now. He is right there with you. There in your room. There on your television. Or there on your uh, smartphone or your tablet. However you're, you're watching this right now. Is he is there with you right now, right beside you, ready to fill you. It is, it is Jesus' greatest desire for you after you and I get born again and we come into the kingdom of God. The greatest desire that Jesus has for you and I is to be filled with his spirit, to be filled with that Holy Spirit. After being born again, this is what he has planned for you and I. The Holy Spirit is a divine investment. God is taking of his spirit 
and placing it inside of you, the believer. His power, His glory, His spirit operating in you. That's His greatest desire. And, and when I said that I'm sharing this from personal experience, see, I did not receive, when I received the Holy Spirit into my life, I did not receive Him at a church. I did not receive Him at a revival meeting. I did not receive him at a random event. What happened is I was reading my Bible and I came to Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And uh, let me re just read those to you very quickly here. And when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all gathered all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. Now, my experience was not in a church. It wasn't at a revival meeting. It wasn't some random event that took place in my life. I was all of 17 years old when I read these words in, in my Bible. I was reading my Bible on my own, and I came across these four verses, and I read them, and, I, and that's all I read. That particular night as I was doing uh, devotions, that's all I read were those four verses, and they struck me so powerfully, so, so strongly in my heart. And I, I immediately put my Bible down. I got down on my knees because I was, I, I was uh, in my bed. And uh, I got down on my knees in my best uh, religious pose and, and began to pray. And I, I didn't even know a, a, a proper prayer to offer to the Lord. But I just, I just simply said from the sincerity of my heart. Father, and th these are my exact words. Father, if this is for today, I want it. Thank you. Amen. That was my whole prayer. I didn't even know how to pray. And uh, I asked the Lord for this gift of the Holy Spirit to come on the inside of me if it's still for today. And what I want you to understand is that it is, it's not something that is only for a few select people. It is for you today. It is for the believer who gets saved tomorrow. It's for as many as the Lord our God shall call. Every day that we call today will be the day that the Holy Spirit can fill your life to the full. And I asked the Holy Spirit to come. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know how this was supposed to work. I, this wasn't happening in a church. Nobody explained it to me. I didn't know what was supposed to happen. So after I got done saying my prayer, I got up off of my knees. I laid down on my bed and I went to sleep. Two hours later, I woke up and I felt like somebody had plugged me into an electric outlet. I felt the fire of God. I felt the electricity of God going through my being and I was filled with the Holy Spirit. And in addition to that, to that my mouth began to speak. Uh, I was not in control of the situation, but as the, as the electricity of God was Coming into my being, my mouth began to speak, and I said, God is in my room. I could even point to the place in my room where he was <laughs> at that mo moment standing. I couldn't see him with my eyes, but out of my spirit, I knew that God was standing in my room and that, th that he was personally present and that I was being filled with the very thing that I had just prayed a few hours earlier. It just, all of a sudden it happened. And I want you to know that in your life also, right now, you can receive the Holy Spirit. You, it can happen just like that. 
When you open your mouth and begin to say, Lord, I'm hungry. I am seeking you. I want what Pastor Mike is talking about. I want what I've seen happen in other people's lives where they've been filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to be the one that you put your spirit and your power in and you can use me to heal the sick and to raise the dead and to do the miracles and and, and all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that it talks about in the Bible. Lord, I want to be that one. Lord, I'm giving myself to you right now. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Well, you can have the Holy Spirit right now. Right where you're sitting, listening to the words that I've been sharing with you today. And I just want to lead you in a simple prayer right now. Just like I offered, I, I just offered a simple prayer. I didn't even, I didn't, I, it wasn't an earth-shattering prayer. It wasn't a, it wasn't a formal prayer. It, but it was a prayer just straight out of the sincerity of my heart. I was genuine. I was real with God. I said, I just, Lord, if it's for today, I want it. Amen. Well, I, I'll pray something a, a little bit more sophisticated with you now than my simple prayer for myself back then. But regardless, it remains the same. You don't have to beg God. Just ask. That's all you have to do to be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you have Jesus in your heart, the, the, now if you don't have Jesus in your heart, you need to do that first. You need to ask Jesus into your heart. He's got to become your king. He has to become your savior. Uh, but once you've done that, then the gift of the Holy Spirit is for all who will come to him. It, it's available to you. So if you want the Holy Spirit, if you already have Jesus in your heart, then ask for the Holy Spirit. He will fill you. Well, let me pray with you first. Let me pray for those of you who are listening. You haven't accepted Jesus Christ into your heart yet. Let me just lead you in a simple prayer to ask Jesus into your heart. Just pray this simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I give myself to you. I recognize my need for you. I'm asking you to be my king, to be my savior. I, I give myself to the kingdom of God, and I proclaim myself to be born again. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, for those of you who have prayed that prayer, and for those of you who have already been saved, but want the Holy Spirit in your life now, let me pray, let, let's pray this simple prayer. And I'm expecting, as we pray this prayer, I'm expecting that many of you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. But even if you're not immediately filled the moment we pray, like me, it, it, it was a couple of hours. It was two hours later as I was, I was, I was asleep. But two hours later, I know exactly what time it was. It changed my life at exactly midnight. The, the power of the Holy Spirit fell on me just a couple hours after I prayed that simple prayer. So whether it happens the moment I pray or within a couple hours, expect the Holy Spirit to fill you. Uh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everybody that's listening to me and desires and is seeking your Holy Spirit. Father, fill them. Right now, as we pray for them, let them be filled with the Holy Spirit. As they open their mouths and, and, and ask for your Holy Spirit to come and dwell and live on the inside of them and fill them, Almighty God. Let their belly be full of the Holy Spirit and let the streams of living water begin to flow through their mouths and out of their lives, Father, let the gifts of your Spirit begin to manifest in their lives, Heavenly Father, as they speak in tongues, as they begin to walk in new life, as they begin, Father, to express the miracle power of God. Father, I thank you. You are raising up men and women with power in their hands and in their mouth to overcome all of the works of the enemy in Jesus name God bless you thank you amen